through the rusted metal beams up in the sky and the collapsing cities with no trace of humankind, all the destruction and chaos, in the quiet of it all, a manga set to emphasize the peace in its fall. Many stories that take place in an apocalypse make abundantly clear that they're doing so. It appeals to a morbid curiosity lots of people have that has become its own niche in media. People like theorizing what would happen if a zombie outbreak came to our door, and what all comes with that arrival. Like what character conflicts would happen, what kinds of monsters rise from the radiation, what violence, what tragedies. All very dramatic and interesting. Or, if some sort of atomic weapon ended life as we know it, and radiation didn't manage to kill off a few of the people, how would we go about living and eventually rebuilding the new world out of the ashes? It's interesting, then, that Girls Last Tour subdues the emphasis on this by keeping it hard to notice by the glance of a casual onlooker. Girls Last Tour, or Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoko, presents itself as an anime and manga consistently as two girls, with war clothing in front of some often destroyed buildings. It makes you think that it might be a war story, but that's not quite it. The war is over, and so is humankind. The manga and anime adaptation both do a great job at building a fairly unique world and then intentionally obstructing the details of its destruction, because that isn't the point of this story. Instead, the manga almost exclusively focuses on these two girls trying to achieve their two goals. The first one is obvious find enough food and water to maintain their energy and keep moving forward. The second is based on that forward movement, where they are aiming to go, the reason why they started. The society of Girls Last Tour is structured in literal layers where there is no sky. There is a baseline society or cities, then the whole society has one roof, and above that roof is another layer, another society. There are elevator shafts and stairs that move between the layers, unsure of how many floors there are, the girls are determined to reach the top and actually see the real sky. We don't know how long the girls have been on this journey before the story starts, but we do know that they strive to reach the very top layer because, apparently, that is where the last of humankind has gone to regroup and rebuild society. So for months, potentially years, they have been constantly moving, trying to reach that top. Along the way, the story sets for the girls a series of encounters all focused around ideas of purpose, happiness, and what keeps people going. I'll be citing a few of those examples from the manga, but I will not spoil the ending of the series. Not necessarily because of spoiler's sake, but because I believe that TK Miz or Tsukumizu meant for it to be experienced and somewhat left up to the interpretation of the reader based on the information that they were given. The girls are kept going by this hope that if they just reach the surface, there will be other people waiting for them, and a more comfortable life waiting there for them too. Cheeto specifically writes her daily events in a journal, so that if she dies or something else happens, at least there's a possibility of her struggles living on without her, like some sort of legacy was left behind. Yuri is the opposite not caring too much about when or how things happen, enjoying her in-the-moment experiences. They have a good dynamic since they are in stark opposition to each other in terms of personality, but they still get along really well and clearly care about each other immensely. The first human character we meet in the story is a man obsessed with map making. He has plotted out on countless pages the layout of one of the floors and takes pictures to remember. He's all alone, but despite that, he fills his life with some sort of practical purpose. The only thing is, he has no one to share these maps with. Not only that, but there's far too many for most people to understand them easily anyway, even if he did find someone. So, they really only serve as a personal sense of accomplishment. As the girls ride up the elevator with him, there is a hiccup in the contraption, and many of his pages spill out, blowing in the wind. He's defeated and decides not to continue with the girls. And one of the last things he still has, his camera, he gives to the girls. It makes you wonder what exactly he's planning to do to continue living, or if that's his intention at all. The next human we meet is a woman who is really good with technology and is trying to build herself a working plane so that she can fly out of the destruction. She thinks that if she flies far enough, she can leave the society, maybe find new people, Chito and Yuri help her out repairing the plane. Many failed launches happen, but eventually, finally, the product seems complete. She takes off into the plane, and it malfunctions, causing her emergency ejection and parachute. As she falls down, she has a look of peace on her face. 
Despite the situation being perilous, she's falling far, perhaps to even lower layers, months, possibly years out from getting back to her base again. That is, if she manages to feed herself and make it back at all. These two stories have a very depressing, hopeless vibe to them, but Yuri keeps quipping jokes. They try and keep their levity and save a few brief moments. The girls don't focus on the implications of the events happening around them. Chito writes in her journal, sort of immortalizing these people as well, and that book that she's writing in is involved with what I found to be a really emotional moment later on into the series. Still, the way that these encounters are written open the story to all sorts of potential life lessons dealing with purpose and distractions. What keeps you and other people happy? What fills your purpose? And why? Next was probably my favorite moment that got an anime adaptation, which was kept extremely close to the source material in the manga. As I've mentioned, the girls are always trying to find more food, and specifically Yuri loves fish. But there are no fish. They're all dead killed by whatever ended humanity, assumably. But they come across a robot who is made to take care of aquariums still functioning. This robot is caring for at least one fish, a final fish, the only alive earthly animal we see in the series. Yuri wants to immediately eat it, but the robot pleads with them not to. This is where Tsukumizu and the situation's writings really shine, I think. If you eat the fish, you leave the robot with no purpose. But it's just a robot, not a person, right? Well, the robot seems to be sentient. Still, you might say, okay, well, it's just a robot. But then again, the only reason the fish is alive in the first place is due to the caretaking done by this robot. So you wouldn't even be given this option to eat the fish if it were not for the robot. However, not eating it would surely be a waste. The robot will lose purpose after the fish dies anyway. And the fish can't reproduce because it's the only fish living, as far as we know. There's far more intentions about eating the fish, though. Just because you know someone is going to die, would you do something to shorten their life? That still seems kind of strange. Now, some people will find this an easy decision to make, but I just want you to consider how many different lines of thought and perspectives could go into this issue. I'm sure that some people would eat without hesitation, and some would abstain without hesitation. While always searching for food, the girls aren't starving, after all. Each person might have a different reasoning. Even if the situation doesn't seem complicated to you, it leaves the viewer a wealth of different perspectives to think of the situation on their own in. The fact that Chito and Yuri can both explore the different sides of this coin also are a testament to the story's great writing in these situations that they experience. The last encounter I want to talk about unfortunately came at a point after the anime stopped adapting. It's about Chito and Yuri meeting an AI. The AI seems to have some sense of sentience, the AI can move endlessly, is not bound by any sort of form, almost like a ghost, and goes on telling the girls how happy they are to finally have someone to talk to, how it's been so long, how they spend their time writing poetry, and in a normal sci-fi, I think that the reader would expect this seemingly nice AI to turn on them. I mean, that's the classic thing, right? But no. Girls' Last Tour almost always takes a more subdued angle rather than a dramatic one, despite the implications themselves being quite severe pretty much the entire time. After the AI helps them and offers to move them up into the next layer, they ask the girls in return to give them one thing. The AI asks if the girls will kill them. They muse on about how worthless all of life becomes when it never ends and how the lack of need to sustain itself leads to essentially an eternal sleeplessness. Infinite memories, thoughts, and actions compiling and mixing up together until it's an unstoppable noise. How life without end is a suffering that doesn't stop. With no restrictions on their existence, they have no sense of accomplishment or goals. How nothing is left to the question if, how it is always left to just when. Even then, the when is so obscured because time becomes irrelevant to this person. They can infinitely work on something, but it doesn't matter because it all just keeps going. I wanted to mention this story because I think it places a final piece that pushes toward a central idea of what a meaningful life is. That it observes people's passions, their hobbies, distractions, duty, legacy. It takes a stab at all these typical ideas of purpose that people come up with. And it does it in such a non-preachy, non-direct, and extremely casual note. With all of that, the series ends with peace. 
I don't think it's my place to push together an exact interpretation or the way that you should think about this in particular. Instead, if you haven't, I think Girls Last Tour is a manga beneficial to anyone, and it's less than 50 chapters to completion. You could finish it in a day or two, easily. If you like Sukumiza's art that I've been showing, I made a video highlighting some of their best in my Wide World of Anime Art video from a few months back, so please check that out if you haven't. With that being said, thank you for coming by for this strange video, and I'm sorry if my voice has been kind of weird, I'm a little bit uh, sick or worn out from streaming so much recently. Anyways, I'd like to thank The Single Way Out, Wizbang2093, Dolphinos, Frillneck Lizard, CJ, Sam Lloyd, Jose Ramirez, and all of my other patrons. And finally, I hope to see you all soon.